What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right, we're back for episode 103. 103 beautiful fucking episodes, or more. But yeah, guys, thanks uh, for coming back. We appreciate you. And we're going to be doing some uh, movies from the 2000s, particularly PG-13 movies from the 2000s. Uh, which is, seems to be a running theme in horror since the 90s. I don't know why, but I guess that's just how it is nowadays because it's easier to market. So we picked a couple that were in that genre, um, one being The Ring and the other one being... The Unborn. So we were going to do, what was it, The Unborn and uh, The Uninvited. I was like, yeah. The Un-theme. But these, <laughs> on theme. yeah, these two movies actually have a running theme, which is the PG thirteen thing. One of the actresses and creepy kids in the movies. So we'll be talking about that in our flesh and potato segments after this. But how you doing, Brandy? Or oh, my God, yeah. I, I've said Brandy about a couple of you times. Said I know, but I said Brandy Did actually. You say Brandy? Yeah, it didn't even sound like it. So how you doing, Brittany? <laughs> that wasn't the second time I did that, by the way, guys. I'm good. It's good times. Good yeah, times. you've like, been having a good time, huh? It's great. It's magical. Uh, so, how are things, Brandy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> great, Stuart. <laughs> I called her Brand. <laughs> I called her Brandy. I don't know why. I think my mind just goes to a dark place. And uh, why is Brandy a dark place? I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> We're going to unpack that later. I, no, it's just I think I'm like, I was a little bit tired earlier before you came <laughs> over, and I was like kind of laying on the bed, so my brain is not well oiled. I did take forever to get here today. Yeah, she's she's late, guys. Not really. She's I'm, fired. Whatever. No, I was like 20 <laughs> minutes later than I usually am. I'm totally kidding. I don't care. because uh, I was playing with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, kind of busy. I made a trailer and stuff for the, uh, for the podcast for last week, I guess it was. Was it last week? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yes. No. Well, technically, while we're recording this the same week, was it was just last... a few days ago that I actually did the other one. Was Monday's episode the grave plots? Sunday. No. I I put it up on Sunday. Are you sure? Yeah. We didn't do movies last. We did movies. We did last movies last week. week, but I'm just saying you got to understand like this. We did the trailer though. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, like, I put the trailer though. out on Sunday. The episode went out on Monday for the Boogeyman. So there it is. I was but, like, we watched two shitty movies since then. I don't. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen the trailer for the uh, grave plots we did, I check it out because I'm thinking about doing that for our grave plots, which is a lot of extra work. It's literally a 51 second trailer that I made, but it took me like four hours. It's cool though. And I just kind of quickly threw it together. So if I actually put some effort into it, it'd probably take about 10 hours, mm -hmm. write the score, do all this fucking crazy <laughs> shit. But anyway, I, I really enjoy doing it. So like maybe, maybe somebody will hire me to make trailers someday. There you go. <laughs> It'll be the closest I get to actually making a horror movie, right? It was a lot better than the trailer for the what fucking show is that? What the Purge TV show? Oh, the Purge TV show. Yeah. Well, I used other people's footage, so it better be. <laughs> 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 well, I think it might be that time, Brittany. Fuck yeah, it is. Horror shots. shots! All right, guys. So this week we're going to be talking about two movies, The Unborn and The Ring. We decided to pick 
The unborn. Yeah, the unborn, basically. Because <laughs> I thought of it and was happy. Yeah. Well, so what did you name it, Brandy? God damn it. I'm I, not I, Brandy. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying Brandy. <laughs> It's like my brain is fucked it's a up. Stripper name. <laughs> okay. So here comes Star coming on down. To... Oh, it's the same as Star. Star Get those Brandy. five dollar bills ready, gentlemen, and uh, drinks are half off after you tip. With your dick. <laughs> I totally sound like it too. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's pretty good. You could be a strip club DJ. I should have been. I yeah. should. I could have been. Yeah. Could've, but could've, I had to do. Should've. I had to make money doing the podcast. You know, oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> um, so what did you call it? So Brittany. I, thank you. I called this shot a jumpy juice. And why did you call it a jumpy juice? Because they're retarded and came up with the most fucking stupid ass name for a character ever. Well, and why? Tell the story oh, a little. Like, to give them a little really, background. Oh, for, of, the stu- of the movie? Yeah, because they didn't, may oh, not okay. have seen it. Sorry, you're right. So if you guys haven't seen this movie, it's basically a teenage girl who starts to be stalked by like a child, essentially. A creepy ass fucking kid that's following her everywhere. And she a can't explain why. Child. She ends up finding out that it was supposedly her twin that died in utero. And they nicknamed the baby for God knows fucking why. Jumby. It's yeah. so confusing to me. And that's what that's what reminded me that I've seen the movie before. When they said that. And then the little kid says that stupid line. I'm like, oh, fucking damn it. <laughs> Jumby wants to be born now. And I'm like, oh, I hate this fucking movie. <laughs> so what is in a Jumby juice, you might ask? Well, it's a delicious treat for you. It's 99 bananas, one part, and one part raspberry liqueur, and you mix in pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. I pineapple. Like, I like your inflection on that. Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's a part each equally, you know what I mean? So three parts, so 99 bananas, raspberry liqueur, and pineapple juice, and then you stare at each other and you say... Jumbie wants to be born now. Yes. And then, and then you then punch you the it. child in the face yeah, and you tell it to go away, kick demon. Kick it across the room. <laughs> do something to it. Jumbie wants to be born now. The whole time, I just every time a kid came on screen, I'm just like, burn it! <laughs> burn it! <laughs> and Mouse is like, that's just a baby. And I'm like, burn it! <laughs> burn them all! <laughs> like, can you tell I love kids in horror movies? <laughs> this is the fucking worst. <laughs> But if you guys would love to try a Jumby Juice, all you got to do is go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horror shot section now. Do it. That's it for horror shots. Horror shots. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into something we haven't done for a little while, and that's the fucking news. Here is the fucking news. There's been a lot of interesting things. Now, we are going to be doing an episode on two movies that are PG-13. And I kind of briefly mentioned this to Brittany ahead of time. But the movie The Meg has been has been released, I guess. And it's, of course, PG-13. The director and Jason Statham have come out pretty upset about the fact that they had to cut out all these like glorious scenes. Um, and uh, Bloody Disgusting did a uh, like an interview with uh, John Turtletob. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I'm hoping I'm saying that name <laughs> That's right. The best name ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, don't get your hopes up for any kind of unrated DVD or Blu-ray. Basically, the problem He says, quote, the problem nowadays with the unrated DVDs is you used to have a bunch of scenes that were easy to either shoot or leave on the cutting room floor. Now to finish the scene costs millions in visual effects. No one's going to be spending millions of dollars just to have a little extra bonus footage. So I'm confused. If it wasn't shit that was already done and now they're cutting it because they have to take it down. No, they didn't even get to shoot it because they didn't want to take the risk. Oh, that's garbage. Yeah. Shitty fucking decision. But it's nice to know that, you know, it at least shines a light on the fact that sometimes the producers have uh, the biggest say and that they'll cut into your artistic and, you know, you don't need to have gore in it. But we love gore, you fucker. Yeah. But they don't want it to just be horror fans because they still consider horror to be a niche thing, even though every distribution company, every fucking other company in the world grabs onto the exploitation flicks and shitty flicks, just like Netflix did. All these different companies 
companies use horror like a fucking dirty bitch and then fucking throw it aside when they get big enough. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off. It's annoying. It really is. It's really fucking annoying. <laughs> One of the scenes that that the director mentioned was he said there was a death in the movie of one of the leading characters where you thought he was still alive and you realized it was only his head. He said, then the reveal that that was all that was left was awesome. But needless to say, quite a few people told us it was creepy and I had to cut it. So, yeah. But he did say that there still is a lot of deaths in the movie. So I'll probably wait till it hits Netflix, unfortunately. There's always a lot of fucking deaths in shark movies and crocodile movies and big creature movies it looked like, like a fun movie and if it, it would have been gory like i mean how many the thing that bothers that me so much cooler is that like you don't need to be a rated r movie in order to be scary okay for those of you who are against all pg-13 period gotta go a little halfway here because i've seen some decent uh, pg-13 movies well i mean one of the movies that we're talking about in this episode is one of the greatest pg-13 movies i feel like for it's ever been made scares i guess Not well even i have some that, thoughts just in general like creepiness well, I feel we'll like get into really that good. but but i i may have differing opinions that's why i say that you so <laughs> but uh i don't know i just think it's fucked up that they you know they got the slender man coming out as well as pg-13 and in other news uh looks like venom may also be pg-13 as well so it's just it's like, like making Deadpool PG-13. I don't know what happened. We had so much like, I guess, because Deadpool 2 didn't do well. All the like execs are like, oh, we better just go back to PG-13 to make it safe. You know what I mean? Sequels like rarely do well. I know. That's I what I'm thinking. Like what fucking crack that they're smoking over there. But obviously they need a new dealer. Now, a lot of people have expressed a lot of, you know, hatred over their, you know, different uh, movies being cut, you know, to fit the like age bracket of like a wider spectrum. I understand it's a business first, but it's like you're spending millions of dollars. I get it. But why are you spending that much money on a movie anyway? You know what I mean? Like just like I know visual effects cost a lot of money, but it's a lot cheaper than doing prosthetics and shit like that i know that's why they do it because they wouldn't they would just do prosthetic but uh just the whole thing's really fucking annoying to me because like i i don't like shark movies period i was the first like shark movie i've ever been excited about right like i was like oh my god this actually looks really cool even though it's really kind of stupid and the whole premise behind it's a little dumb but at the same time the trailer is really cool and I saw that there was going to be in, like, 3 and IMAX and shit. And I was like, I want to see this in fucking IMAX. Like, how dope would that be? Right. You know? And I feel like that's really the only way to see this movie, to be well, honest. Because it's a, such a giant scale Sony shark. is the main people who are in charge of the Meg, uh, Slender Man, and the new Venom movie coming out. And uh, there's a newer article in Variety. They uh, are reporting that Venom adaptation could be rated PG-13 and that some of the members of Sony's brain trust, quote unquote, uh, believe that the film should push the very limits of PG-13 without crossing over into a higher rating. So I don't... I, I, disappointing. First of all, I mean, Venom, it's like whatever. But these other movies, they should... Like it's... Kids these days are literally 10 years old and watching shit they shouldn't be watching on their internet. Their parents don't give a fuck what they do on the internet. Why the fuck are you going to worry about it in the theater? But I, I don't know. Yeah, it's stupid. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. I don't know. I wish they would push it a little bit more. I mean, maybe maybe the Meg will be good. Maybe Venom will be good. I'm, I'm not really... I don't have too high hopes for Venom. Mm-hmm. What did they end up? What was the rating for the Evil Dead remake? Was that PG thirteen? Oh hell no! Or was it R? No, it was R. Okay, I can never remember. Yeah, if they would have done PG thirteen, people would have like literally burned down the fucking studio. Dick. Yeah, like people would have been upset. Yeah, well, I just know it's always very surprising when any movie gets an R rating at this point. Any horror movie gets an it, R rating. It, it it seems like anymore, which is weird to me because it's so easy with all these other. It's okay to be, movies. but again, it's okay to be PG thirteen. It's just like when it comes to horror, it just limits you. It just limits like what you know, like people who enjoy the genre don't mind rated R. Okay. And people who are bitching about an R are people that don't like horror to begin with. Right. Like they don't want to see horror like that. 
And maybe they should just put out edited versions, you know, maybe watch an R-rated cut and maybe watch a PG-13 and just leave it up to the fucking thing and see, just see how it does. But they would never do that because it's just wasted money in their opinion. Stupid. So, but what do you guys feel about it? I'd love to hear your opinions about PG-13. I did post something in the group about the Meg thing, but uh, in other news... Looks like Glenn Danzig is actually directing and scoring a horror movie based on his Verotic comic book characters. Um, looks like Blabbermouth.net actually uh, posted about this. He signed a feature film agreement with Cleopatra Entertainment, a division of the Los Angeles independent record label Cleopatra Records. Danzig will pen, direct, and compose music for the feature film, which will be structured as an anthology, splitting its running time between three individual characters or storylines based on Danzig's own popular verotic comic book characters. So I don't know when that's going to be coming out, but Verotic, if you're not familiar, is Dan Zig's long running brand of mature horror comic books and uh, related material. The comics featuring mostly deadly femme fatales Dope. has been in print since 1994. Uh, principal photography for the anthology film will begin the fall of 2018. I got something to say. <laughs> I made a movie today. today. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. I love it. That's and exciting, all I want to do is show some titties, girl. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. Oh, I'm sure. It's it, going to be tits, 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 tits. That'll have no problem getting rated R. Well, right. Maybe. But but he can mask it as like a female powerful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so the, nobody will mind it. But the, but since it's because it's because made by him, there might be some people upset about it. Who there's knows? There's going to be people upset about it, period. Like, there's always going to be feminists that are just like... Why does there have to be naked chicks? They can't just be powerful and be fully clothed. I've never, which I mean, like they can be powerful and fully clothed. Well, look they at Lady Death, like right. I and mean, it's it's like it's obviously comic books. Like you're not gonna sell a comic book without like chick has to be hot. She's gotta have a nice body. She's gotta be basically naked. Like it's <laughs> the other people who read comic books for the most part. You know, what she I mean? wears like, a cardigan sweater. And I don't like... want to read a comic book about a chick if she's not hot and I'm a chick. <laughs> so that's just the way it goes. Like I'll, sure, I'll she let can you. Be I'll let you dig your own lead. grave. I can't. Well, I mean. Yeah, well, I can. I'm a girl. <laughs> Come at me. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. Like, it's the same way. Like, with dudes, I want to see hot dudes and spandex and shit, too, when I read that stuff. So, to be honest, I'd are. have to read the comic books I in order even to heard know. Of them, so. Which is shocking to me because I love that shit. Yeah, I, I, I kind of did a little quick peruse of it, but I didn't really. Which I'm still waiting for them to make crossed into a fucking movie or a series. Oh, I think they talked about it <gasps> they once. They did. But... They can't. There's yeah. no way in fucking hell they're going to be able to pull that off. That shit is so fucking violent. I, there's no way. I mean, fuck. There's I don't like, know enough about it to really say anything. <laughs> I will tell you, like, one specific, like, scene from one of the books is the, there's a dude fucking a dolphin in its blowhole, basically. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's <laughs> fucked up. Like, it's super fucked up. I've and heard I love of this. So Maybe I much. have heard of this. I've, I've, You've seen that picture. I, from I don't that, know if I've seen sure. that. I, I would remember the picture, but yeah, I, I remember sure. hearing something like that. I'm sure of, if you ever come across it, you're going to be like, why have I seen this before? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's so good. Oh, wow. So good. You can you can read. I um, have a bunch of like, books, but you can read. They hey, took it to you the and internet. Me, you and me are nothing but mammals, so let's do it. <laughs> I know. It's, they take that to a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah, really? Well, in other news, though, we also have Jake Busey has been back in the news for a lot of reasons. One, because he's playing a foul mouth reporter in the new Stranger Things episodes uh, for the season three. Is he related to Gary Busey? I, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, His he's actually I watched Contact recently I too, and he was that. in that movie as well as this like crazed like like I don't know like some sort of cult Contact member. Again. I haven't seen that. In it's so not long. as great as I I thought it was gonna be again. But... I don't. Yeah, I never. I don't care. Like I I feel the same way about a lot of movies that I'm like that I loved and then I watch them now and I'm like meh. <laughs> but but also he part of the reason that he's in this is that he talks about a legit version of the film the. Uh, of the Frighteners that is four or five hours long. Like, apparently, Peter Jackson, who directed the Frighteners with Michael J. Fox and all these other fucking amazing actors, including Jeffrey Combs, one of my favorite roles that he's ever done, uh, just because it's so fucking great. My body is a roadmap of pain. <laughs> uh, he's using his mind powers! Get him away from me! <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but that movie's great. Uh, but anyway, he apparently uh, G, uh, Peter Jackson actually did about seven or eight hours of film footage of that movie, and they cut it down to four or five. 
he was saying, Jake Busey was saying that um, a lot of movies actually do have about four or five hours of footage. They cut it down to an hour and a half. But this movie probably had more like seven or eight and they cut it down to like two. So it's crazy. Yeah. Which we'll probably never ever see this. He said you probably have to uh, petition online in order to see that before Peter Jackson would ever release a five hour cut of that movie for five hours. Oh, <laughs> people are going to petition it now. So <laughs> I don't know. I but it's going to happen. Besides Frighteners, though, I, J- Peter Jackson, if you're listening now, first of all, I love you. Thank you for making Dead Alive. It is my all time favorite movie. Yeah. Can you please bring it out on Blu-ray fully uncut? Because I would love you for life. Uh, I already you do. You suck your dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in other non cock sucking news uh there is the fog and the evil dead are getting their 4k treatment and we ain't talking no upscale bullshit it's gonna be full 4k dope looks like evil dead and we didn't get to report on this last week but it was news from the week before um but (laughs) evil dead is actually gonna be coming out on 4k ultra hd combo pack with uh, blu-ray and digital on october 9th uh which i'm probably gonna pick up even though i don't even have a 4k tv i just gotta get it They've, they've got the it's funny to me because you're picking up the most clear picture right of the movie that's ever been made directly from the film the original film like negative and then you're, the cover of the 4k is literally a folded up poster of the original evil dead cover hey. with the girl reaching up which i think is just kind of silly gotta right cut corner somewhere bro. right like what well, they're trying to <laughs> rag it up you know to make it give it that retro feel yeah. you know but it's like 4k, 4K bro. like we, it was it. you know anyway I'm going to buy it, too. The uh, the Feel Fog good. is also coming out in theaters October 26th, so you're probably going to see the 4K shortly thereafter uh, or around the same time because pretty much how it's going to go. So, <laughs> Which is weird that they picked The Fog, but well, hey. I, I agree. I, I don't dislike the movie at all. I like it, but it's not my favorite of the John Carpenter movies that if I had to it's pick them. It's that, interesting yeah. that's the one that it's, they went with. It's okay. really unique, and it's kind of got this like whole sort of... Um, I don't know. It's 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 another like you know H.P. Lovecraft nod a little bit. It's a bit. cool movie, right? Like it's a cool fucking movie. But at the same time, out of all of his stuff, like that's, well, and Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. That's the one. Like, I don't yeah. know why? <laughs> and 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 Thrill Me's in it. <laughs> Thrill Me. Thrill Me. I'm pretty sure he's in it. Yeah, like Tom. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, but anyway, that's it for the news. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into our The Ring and The Unborn of our flesh and potatoes right now. So we're going to start this um, part off with the first movie, The Ring, which was released in 2002. The remake. Oh, yeah. This is technically the remake. It's, it's not the Ringu. American version right. of Ringu. Ringu. Or The Ring. Whatever. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's fine. Um, <laughs> this is about a journalist that must investigate a mysterious videotape, which seems to cause the death of anyone within a week of viewing it. This movie was directed by Gore Verbinski, who is also known for A Cure for Wellness, The Lone Ranger, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, and At World's End. Right. So, three of them. This was pre-Pirates. Yeah, it was, surprisingly. I was actually surprised he hasn't done more movies. Wow. Because his name is so common to me, and I've only seen like the first two Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and had no idea he did the other ones. I'm not a huge fan of those. I'm movies. not either. I mean, they're visually stunning in some of them, and I think I like the Dead Man's Chest one because it was the one that actually went a little bit. Yeah. Well, wild. the the only part about the first one that I like is when the um, 
the fucking pirates going in the water and the moon hits them and they turn into skeletons. Right, yeah. All of that shit when they're skeletons is my favorite. Joe Rogan was just talking to Macaulay Culkin recently about fucking Johnny Depp and how he's in like autopilot mode. And they were talking about like 20 years ago how Johnny Depp was like, I'm not your blockbuster boy. I don't want to be doing because he was doing like that movie, The Dead Man or Dead Man Walking or something. Dead Man Walking or whatever the fuck it was. I think that's it. It was like that really weird art house flick in black and white that he did. It was actually not a bad film, but uh it's funny, like they were saying that, and I was like, "Holy shit, yeah, he is kind of on autopilot now." Like, but he's just rake. He bought an island. He owns like yeah, you know fifteen how much houses. Money that motherfucker has right. Like, it, he, it's insane. And you know what? I don't even care. I like him. <laughs> he's a good actor. He's on autopilot, though. but he is. Yeah. And I kind of wish he would get a little bit more choosy about shit that he does. But well, it's, hey. it's because every time he plays a normal role, he nobody likes the movie as much. Right. <laughs> he has to be wild and zany and fucking uh, what's his name from the Rolling Stones? <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Anyway, it was written by Aaron Kruger, which is like the coolest name ever, by the way, and especially how he spells it. Mm-hmm. E-H-R-E-N. I love it. Um, who did the screenplay? He's done Scream 3, Arlington Road, Reindeer Games, Rings, Rings 2, The Skeleton Key, and the most recent Ghost in the Shell. Gina Davis, Reindeer Games. Among a bunch of others. I yeah. love that movie, actually. I, I haven't I, seen that in a long time either, it's but been it's a good. While. My mom made me watch that. And it was also done by Koji Suzuki, who wrote the novel for The Ring, Ring 2, Rings, and Dark Water. Huh, interesting. Which I didn't realize that he wrote Dark Water. That's pretty the interesting. Yeah, those are all movies that were um, basically American ripoffs. Yep. Which is interesting well, this that one... the, how these two are related in that regard because, yeah. like, yeah. Well, this opened the door for right. all of these Japanese, like, American <laughs> version ripoffs of Japanese <clears throat> books and movies. Right. The Ring pretty much opened that and they found out that this would be a lucrative thing. So mm-hmm. they continued and they went with, you know, The Grudge and Dark Water and a couple other movies. But I don't feel like anything had the same kind of impact as The Ring did, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, it stars Naomi Watts, who plays Rachel, who was in one of my favorite movies ever, Mulholland Drive. King Kong, she was in the Twin Peaks reboot, uh, The Ring 2, and she's also in Tank Girl, mm. which I totally forgot about. <laughs> it also has Martin Henderson, who plays Noah, who was in Smoking Aces. The most recent, The Strangers Pray at Night, Devil's Knot, and more recently, for any of you guys that watch TV, he is in Grey's Anatomy. It also has David Dorfman, who plays Aiden, who's in The Ring 2, the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and a TV series short called Zombie Roadkill, which I've never heard of, but kind of want to check out. That's right. I remember. Have you seen that? No, I just remember. Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I'm thinking of the, the remake, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I did Massacre. the same thing. Yeah. I, was like, I remember he was the kid with the, that was hiding in the, in the, the shed. Mm-hmm. or whatever that was trying to help them i was so confused when i saw i was like what the fuck are you talking about and Dude, that I went kid's back and freaky like, looking shit. yeah he's yeah yeah he's weird he's a weird one <laughs> try to be polite I a guess. weird one um <laughs> and also has you want to know me brian cox yes uh who plays richard morgan manhunter he was in kiss the girls another one of my favorite movies um the reckoning zodiac trick-or-treat Mm-hmm. TV series that I always talk about, Deadwood. And he was also in a couple episodes of Penny Dreadful. He was also in the movie that I really like. And if you haven't seen Autopsy of Jane Doe, yes. really like that movie. He's in a lot of shit, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I just tried to pick stuff that I feel like our listeners would know. Too. Sure. But yeah, you're right. Because that was kind of recent, wasn't it? Autopsy yeah, Jane it was Doe. Uh, It was one of my top picks for two years ago. Is it a Netflix movie? You could probably watch it on Netflix. So, it's somewhere up. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. No, I, I have it. Um, <coughs> saved to watch. Okay. I don't think I've watched it yet, though. Last but not least, the one that I picked to talk about is uh, is a Davy Chase, Davy mm-hmm. Davy Chase, who plays Samara, who's from Donnie Darko, S. Darko. Um, she's the voice for Lilo from Lilo and Stitch. Literally every Lilo and Stitch movie, TV possible, anything involved. Um, and she is most recently was in Big Love. And I want to mention one last one. Uh, Jane Alexander was in this movie, who she plays the doctor mm-hmm. in it. Uh, she was in Glory, Terminator Salvation, The Unborn, which we're going to be talking about next, and then Dream House. Yeah, I didn't even realize it. Yeah. Had a related actor. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Alex is like, yeah, it's the old lady. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I watched these back to back and didn't even realize it. So The Ring had an estimated $48 million budget, which is very surprising to me. That's a lot. That's a lot of fucking money. 
Um, I was very surprised about that. And it pulled I, in. I figured that you would be too. Opening weekend, it only pulled in a little over fifteen million. Um, this was released over the October like eighteenth through twentieth weekend or something like that in two thousand and two. Okay. Uh, wide release though, but it did end up grossing ultimately in the United States one hundred and twenty nine million, and cumulative worldwide gross was over two hundred and forty nine million dollars right so box office fucking smash it right basically which is why we have sequels yeah (laughs) they're not good sequels (laughs) but we have them so alex i would like to know what your thoughts were on this because you said you had some shit to say and now i'm like what the fuck do you to say about this movie right now well first of all i mean it's been a little while since i've seen it so to be honest, while, you know, I don't think it's a bad movie or anything like that, I especially compared to the rest of the American franchise, to be honest with you, it's probably the best one in the whole thing, in my opinion. It is the best one in the, the whole thing. The original <laughs> and the sequels are mostly all great, in, in my opinion, because they kind of kept the same tone for the most part, although they there's some history on that, too, and I'll talk about that. About the, the that. Japanese ones? Yes. Yeah, okay. It's definitely watchable, though, this one. And I follow along just fine, but I think I remembered it a little bit more fonder than I did this viewing. So I'm not really sure what I think 100%. Like, I like it, but it was just kind of like watching something. Yeah. I wasn't like really enthralled with everything. I like some of the things. At the time when this movie came out, there's some really great ideas that they, they executed in this film that differ from the original. And I think some of them were executed like really, really well. But... Especially for for 2002, let's be honest, some of the effects and everything were really great for that time. Now, maybe it's just it just hasn't aged well for me, or maybe some of those ideas and those tropes that they use in this movie have been regurgitated so many other times in other films that I might be a little like, meh. I feel like that's exactly what it is, because they've taken so many, basically this whole general idea of Samara and her character and that whole concept, and they've just done that and done that and done that over and over and over and over and over 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 the last like 15 20 years or whatever like so i I think that that's probably a lot to do with what it is is maybe overused concept i still enjoyed it but i mean it it kind of pushed it further back from my rewatch list Mm -hmm. so like then i thought it was i initially anticipated it to be to be you know i figured oh i'll watch this probably in a year or two you know like i don't know Maybe it's just maybe it's just me. I don't know. Still, there's there is some iconography that's in this movie that is pretty cool. Um, I like that they redid the the video and shit and like made it into this mystery a little bit more than like the original that I re- recall because I haven't watched that in a long time either. But um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I've just been spoiled by more better films since then, and it just kind of changed my opinion. I'm not picking on anybody who loves this film, by the way. I totally get it. It's a decent idea, but now I feel like I need to go back and watch the originals. You know, aside from rings which i watched you know a couple years ago i think i did a review on it on youtube if you guys want to check it out uh which i wasn't real fond of at all like i didn't like it uh, i felt that it was extremely average i had high hopes for it to go buck shit wild on the screen they yeah, had some decent ideas did. some of the acting was just oh it just bothered the shit out of me so and it came around the time that the bye bye man came out too so oh. We keep bringing that up and he keeps coming back. I keep telling him, bye. Bye, man. And he keeps coming back and I just want to <laughs> fucking burn it alive. But I, I think I enjoyed The Ring versus The Grudge more, which you can watch oh, on Shudder. I don't Shutter. like The Grudge at all. No, 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 no. You don't understand. The movie's called The Ring versus The Grudge. <laughs> oh, we, we, you're right. So, yeah. Well, you're it's, totally it's right. called I'm Sadako sorry, versus, versus Kayaku, right. which is on Shudder. You need you're to watch it if you right. have it. Right. I totally forgot about Which is that. funny that you just said that because I didn't, I was supposed to do a uh, podcast with uh, some people on uh, Don't Go Down That Road. Don't Go Down That Road. I love that. Uh, that and I did so the, cute. and they wanted me to watch they were like we're gonna watch uh the The ring versus the grudge and i was like oh you just want to do one movie in my mind i'm like okay and so they were like how did you not know that we were talking about the original ring and the grudge uh from the america and i'm like you it just came out like that's why i thought you were saying that yeah i remember you telling me about that (laughs) anyway and then i was like oh you're ready to do it in a movie like it's one movie together but but still i don't like the grudge (laughs) moving forward Oh, it was the worst in the world. Everybody in the theater fucking doing it <laughs> constantly. And then for like seven fucking months afterwards, the whole uh, thing, I'm all, fuck you. 
pisses me off. And I it's laughed the same, in the theater. The same with fucking Hereditary. They did that shit too. That, when like, I saw the grudge in the off. theater, I saw Bill Pullman like do a cartwheel over the fucking railing. <laughs> and I started laughing in the theater. <laughs> he like falls over. He just like, whatever. Oh, it's so just funny. Like, <laughs> No, to me, that's just, that's a comedy. Like nothing about that movie is fucking scary. It's all just <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, like, it's just ridiculous. Well, in this movie though, but, yeah, I do like that Brian Cox was in it. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah, even though he's so like, I really love him in Trick or Treat, and then of course Autopsy of Jane Doe. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to see him in this role. He's really a very good actor, and I don't th- I think he's underutilized as a oh, as an actor. Uh, he's very intense. And just like, I don't know, there's something about him. So his part was good. The characters did have some decent spots of acting that I did enjoy, although there was some really bad spots, too, in this movie. Um, the kid freaks me out, too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, like, he's a possessed child that has some sort of adult trapped inside of his little freakish body or it's whatever. Fucking weird. So, so there's that. I kept making bad jokes about him, too, like, <laughs> while watching it because it just freaks me out. Oh I'm God. like, kick it, kick it, kick it in the face. Oh my god! Okay, so you're just like me with fucking kids and movies. Like I get so pissy. Like I, I, I kind of like, did kill the, it. I did it with the Unborn too, though. Oh, to be the fair. whole movie. Yeah, the whole fucking movie. Like I said, any kid that came on screen in that movie, I was like, burn it. I like Jane Alexander too. She's the old lady in both of these movies that we watched. Even though she's in it for like thirty seconds. She's good though. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's like very short-lived roles, she's literally. So good, yeah, she's and she's uh, kind of kind of a pivotal character, I guess, in her 30-second screen time. Right. But overall, you know, it, it's it's a good movie. It's a little outdated from the time where the Asian ghost flicks, a.k.a. the J-horror movies, were pretty popular. And, and then in a few years later, they became unpopular. And so America, of course, was always late to the game, trying to milk off the J-horror phase uh, that kind of died out like four or five years later. Um but still, it's not a bad American take on the film. And it's probably like a six and a half to me, maybe a seven or higher, especially if you compare it to other remakes of the genre of the J-horror. I think it's one of the better ones. Yeah. By so a fucking clear mile. Right. And it's PG-13. So if you have to put it into that category, I would say it's a solid seven. You know, I don't know. But this is one of the greater PG-13 horror movies for me, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't. I think it is one of the better ones, but I mean, I still feel like. Could you imagine if it was like extremely gory? It'd be so good. Every movie would be good with gore. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm movie. a gore hound, so like just like with what they wanted to do with this, but had to cut down. Yeah, would have just made it so like much more like just out of this fucking world. Like just little things. That I they think wanted so. To do but that's why I like the couldn't. Grudge versus Kayaku yeah. or Kayaku versus Sadako or whatever. But uh, what about you, though? What do you think? I, I've always really liked this movie, to be honest. Well, it seemed so, like it, yeah. Yeah, like I was excited when you suggested it because I, honestly, I was surprised. Well, I, we've been doing so many old movies. We always do old movies. We'll be, so do, we'll we'll be doing a lot of 80s. We've been doing a lot of ripoffs. I don't know. We've been doing a lot of older ones. And I was like, well, maybe we should do some more current stuff. So yeah. I, I figured feel like we jump ahead. Constantly, I feel like we're doing, we're either in the 80s or like yeah. early 90s. So like we're stuck in this like 15 year like like range. Right. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> or like between like 75 and like 95. We and dip into like, Alex, like, I'm going to yeah. fucking kill you. Well, we're going like, to have to do 60s movies soon. So I'm okay with that. Whatever. So I was really excited when we got to do this. This is one of my favorite. Like there's so many visuals that I've always taken away from this movie that I will hold on to forever. Just, they're just so beautiful. Yeah. And the tape on its own is just a fucking masterpiece by itself. You like mean the I, video the that video, it plays? Yeah, okay. the video that they watch, like, is just, it's so fucking cool. And the story, like, yeah, the acting gets a little bit spotty here and there. Like, there's some characters that just annoy the fuck out of you and others that are just like, why are you here? You know, it is what it is. But overall, I've always been impressed with this movie. I thought they did a really good job with it. And the visuals make up for all of it for me, to be honest. Like, I can watch this movie just with no sound and be perfectly happy about it okay well they got that blue tint to everything yeah and i, I love that like yeah. I've, I've always liked that which is like just how they film it like artistically it's just like a different take on everything i don't know i've always loved that like film that they put on st- like a yeah lot they wanted to movies. give it that drab feeling you know it's kind of like evil dead has this own its own like type of grit and dirt to it like it's the same with this. It has its own view. Maybe they just fucked up the color correction. Fucking probably. <laughs> We're all giving them credit for something we think. Yeah, they they're did like, yeah, no, really, it was supposed to be a color. We're and... like, whoops. <laughs> 
Like, we fucked that up, but okay, <laughs> please keep thinking it was intentional. <laughs> um, so yeah, to me, like I this, it still is good now as it was when I first saw it. Okay. So I mean, I saw this in like 2003, so it was like 13 probably when I saw it. And well, I assumed it would be better for you than it was for me well, because you're more recent for me, right? Yeah, like it's something that you grew up with a little bit more. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I mean, this was a big fucking deal for me growing up. It was a big deal to me too, though. So yeah, like this was a, this was this was it. You know what I mean? Like this was like our my generation's like evil dead okay you know you think i think so like wow. I, I mean i don't know about evil dead that's a that's i'm a trying huge... to think of a big movie like in comparison right to it you know like and or um i don't know like, i can't final really destination would be like uh, something i would think Maybe if, yeah final destination or like scream or urban legend like or, Saul whatever. or like, something i don't know um it was a big deal for me i just remember it being a big deal same with like when the grudge came out that was a big thing i think maybe too because a lot of it was a lot of my friends were into like japanese well, I, manga that's, and books and things like that so that's what i was gonna like, say i was really into the j-horror at the time right. i was looking for the underground shit right. that america wasn't even didn't even know about like mm-hmm. in the late 90s on yeah so exactly yeah so that's why i don't know if i I've always resonated with this movie. It was never, it never scared me by any means, but I just felt like I have always remembered the the visual takeaway from everything. Mm-hmm. Like I remember the pictures that they have that she's created or whatever, like with the actual horse, rocking horse thing with the nails and shit all in it. Like so cool. Sure. And there's one scene in that movie that I hate hated when I first saw it, and Ugh. hated it every time I've seen Talking it. Talking about the nail popping. No, that doesn't bother me. I hate that. I always think of the corn music video. Anyway, no, it's not that. I'm talking about the scene with the horse. Okay. Ugh, kills me. I don't like watching war <laughs> movies, old war movies, because of horses that die. It pisses me the fuck off. Like <laughs> Animals in general. Animals in general bother me, but horses and dogs are like the biggest things for me. I'm like, nope. Even the director want, of The Meg it. said, he's like, you can kill 10,000 oh, people, but as soon as you kill a dog or an animal... <laughs> You're fucked. You're gonna yeah. get. A, you're gonna get letters. Hate mail. Strongly Everyone worded letters you. or tweets nowadays. Yeah. No. And it's. I feel like it's kind of always been like that. To be honest. But <laughs> no. It's. It's. You can. You can brutally fucking murder however many fucking people you want in a movie or a TV show or whatever. But the second you kill one fucking animal, everybody's up your ass. I, and I always get offended by that too. <laughs> like, I don't. You know. I, I don't. It. I don't like it. But I don't like. I know it's not real. Yeah. Like that, I never, and it's not something I, I, I don't, I don't like seeing a dog get shot in the face. Like they never really do that. I don't, yeah, I know it's not real. I don't care. It's like I'm the just, John, it's the John Wick thing, you know, that's what. Why makes, I didn't watch that movie. Yeah, but you know why everybody <laughs> loves that then. movie is because the dog gets killed. Well, because it justifies the all thing. the brutal murdering that he does yeah, after that. I, I would kill people if they did that to my dog too. Exactly. So. And that's what's missing from the second one. Like they didn't kill his dog. They didn't again. kill his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <sighs> so what score would you give this movie, by the way? And to, oh, this is like a solid like seven and a half out of ten for me. Okay. But yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the, the ring face. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I never liked that. I like, laugh I always every time. thought it was stupid. And when they make fun of it in Scary Movie, I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's so dumb. Oh, well, that's why I like it is because it's silly. Yeah. That's why I like because well, like, that's what makes it like that's what it's funny. I think ruined it for yeah, me. Yeah, it's funny. You know, even when I first saw it, I laughed. <laughs> Like when I was a little kid and I see it, I thought it was hilarious. I didn't think it was scary. See, that's what we should have done for this shot. You got to make a ring face at each other <laughs> as you drink it. Oh, my God. You got to make that noise, you know? <laughs> anyway. No. Uh, so I have some trivia. Okay. And one of the things that I was, I'm actually really sad that I don't have this on DVD because I want to try this. Okay. So this is trivia slash I want everybody to try it for me because I don't have this movie on DVD. We have The Ring 2 on DVD. God knows fucking why. Okay. But we don't have this one. So the cursed video is actually available as an Easter egg on the DVD. So you select the select look here and you press down. Oh, and I remember your, that. Your cursor is going to disappear. Right, right. I remember that. And you, when you hit. So then after that, you're going to hit enter, which has an interesting feature. Your remote control becomes completely disabled. Once the video starts playing, you cannot stop it. You cannot pause it. You cannot fast forward it. And you can't cannot return to the menu. The only thing you can do is turn off the TV, otherwise you're forced to watch the entire video. Seven days. When it's over, <laughs> the DVD returns to the main menu, and then you hear a phone ring twice before you're given control over your remote again. I fucking love that. Yeah, I remember it. And I, they I... have a similar-ish feature on the VHS. 
if you like rewind it back far enough or some shit like that, like it has a similar feature on the VHS tape too. Yeah, that's very linear though. Right. I'm like, well, uh, yeah, what like, forward thinking have you are you guys? Yeah, or like, reverse? Or re- I guess, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> VHS was still a fucking thing in two thousand and two. Yeah, okay? but it wasn't like a DVD where it has several layers. No, but I, I thought that was I just thought that was cool. No, yeah, I wanna find no, a it is. VHS copy and go fuck around with that too. <laughs> Let's see. So until the twenty seventeen remake of Stephen King's It mm-hmm. came out. The Ring was the highest grossing horror remake in history. Wow. Because it grossed a total of, like we said earlier, $249 million fucking dollars. It's a lot of fucking money. Back then, yeah, for sure. Which is crazy to me that this made more than the Evil Dead remake, which makes me a little sad. Yeah. Because the Evil Dead remake is well, fucking it's, brilliant. It's because it's PG-13, right? Probably. Fuckers. Well, because Evil Dead was R, so I feel like they probably would have had more people if it was PG-13. Ultimate, then it would have sucked, so. Yeah, but you know what the funny thing is? Is that that movie may have sold well in the theaters, but I don't see that many people buying The Ring and thinking about The Ring remake. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying that it isn't a good movie or anything. I'm just saying that it... I really have a feeling that the the remake of uh, Evil Dead is going to outlast. Oh, big time! The Ring, absolutely. It the Ring will always be remembered and people will like it, but it, in the end, Evil Dead remake is going to make a shit ton more money than the Ring will. Oh yeah, it's going to end up grossing like a whole lot more. I'm sure at right. this point, if they revisit it, it's made a lot more money. Especially that the other movies haven't been all that great of the Ring franchise in America. The Ring Rings was just terrible. I mean, it was okay. It was just a movie. I've seen 40 minutes of that movie and had no interest in continuing or starting from the beginning and finishing it. So, thank you. So, that sick-ass fucking tree that she sees in the distance, like the main tree, focal point, basically, with the fiery red leaves, is actually a Japanese maple. And the fruit that that tree produces is called a Samara. Oh. Which I thought was fucking cool. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool. Like, I just, I never, re- I don't know. I just like how like literal they actually got with shit. Um, the lighthouse that they show in the movie is a fictional, it's a fictional name for an actual lighthouse. So they call it the Moesco Island yeah. Lighthouse in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a real lighthouse that's located in Newport, Oregon, which was built in 1870 motherfucking three. It's old as fuck. Nice. But the real lighthouse is named the Yaquina Head Lighthouse and is actually still currently an active aid to navigation. And it's reported to be haunted by a ghost of a past keeper, Ooh. which I think is really cool. Was the ghost named Samara? No. Okay. It's probably like <laughs> stew or something stupid. Seven days. Seven days. <laughs> so when they showed Noah's locker in the AV room, you notice there's a bunch of cool ass stickers for bands and stuff in there. At least I did. That's okay. What my, that's what my head went to or my eyes went to. So he has a bad religion sticker that's primarily focused invisible in his locker, right? Gore Verbinski actually directed the 94 music video for American Jesus. Oh, okay. By Bad Religion, which was a 1993 Epitaph Records release of Recipe for Hate. And other stickers that are visible in the locker include those for other Epitaph bands, Pennywise, The Refused, Lars Fredrickson and the Bastards, and The Descendants. Hmm, nice. I was like, that's a fun little tie. That is but cool. I thought that was really interesting. Ah. Um, another thing that I had is about some of the stuff that they use to promote the movie. So I don't know what you have that... You want to tell me some? Uh, tell me some trivia, Alex. Well, the person who wrote the Ringu series was it was a novel first. Koji Suzuki wrote the his second novel, which was Ringu, about a reporter investigating the deaths of four teenagers found dead after watching a mysterious videotape. It became one of the biggest best selling horror novels in Japan. It was so wildly popular that they actually called him the Stephen King of Japan. So that's how big this book was. Uh, At the time, the J-horror craze had been popularized, and The Grudge shortly followed this movie in particular in 2004. So they made a remake in 2004 in America uh, from another Japanese horror movie or J-horror. And that movie made about $187 million off of a $10 million budget. So one-fifth of the budget that The Ring had. And it almost made the same amount of money as The Ring. Right. Isn't that worldwide. crazy? That is crazy. Uh, you mentioned Dark Water as mm-hmm. well. That was another movie that came out of this time. They also did the Pulse movie, which yep. was another uh, Japanese remake. Isn't one Miss Call, one too. Shutter, one Miss Call. Like, there's all these other ones. I believe the uh, Pulse movie was called Cairo. I think so. 
So, right. but and then we started to finally take foreign horror films and remake them and make them decent. Right. Well, <laughs> like years, years later. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Many I don't know about later. that because they did that to record, and I think the record movies are better than oh. the, the remakes. No, 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 I'm not talking about that one. Okay, but yeah, but, I think some of the originals are actually really good. Um, but you know, the Ring franchise kind of fizzled out. The when... Ring was my favorite out of those that were done over the next like eight years. Really? I mean, whatever. like I liked it better than Dark Water and Pulse. And the Ring 2 was really, a lot of people get upset about that one. Yeah. The studio actually placed copies of the Mysterious Killer tape at concerts and events and shit, like, all over the city. Fuck. Um, and the tape had a label directing whoever watched it to a website, which was, like, an openletter.com or something, I believe, um, which was supposedly written by a pedophile who'd seen the tape and was now trying to warn others about its impending, their impending fate or his impending fate, right? It's the global conspiracy. Yeah, which this <laughs> character was actually portrayed by Chris Cooper, who was included in the movie, but was completely cut out of it hmm. later on. So Chris Cooper, just briefly, he's from American Beauty. He plays the fucking psychotic, kill, like, beater dad to... The hot guy. Oh, okay. Super military guy. And he's also an adaptation. But in a subplot that was deleted completely by the theatrical release, like I mentioned before. The website contained links that led to other movie-related mock-ups, including a page written by one of Katie's friends, who was a character in the movie that died, obviously. Where she didn't she didn't die, but so they tried no, to make Katie it... did. Katie died. Sorry. I get confused on which one died. Teenagers. They tried to make to a me. viral marketing thing. Essentially. So one of the pages supposedly written by Katie's friends who was unaware of her death and believed that she'd been kidnapped or ran away. And a page was written by scientists who researched psych like psychic phenomena, including televisions and transmissions. And when the movie was released, DreamWorks deleted all of the web pages and denied ever having anything to do with them. What the fuck? In the end. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. I wonder if anybody <laughs> saves some of that that's stuff. That's like crazy. What is that? Like guerrilla marketing or whatever. It's like this crazy ass fucking tactic that I love. Like, I'm like, that's so fucking cool. And I would love to come across one of those tapes that someone left somewhere. Well, you got the Blair Witch that really kind of started it. And then you also have like Nine Inch Nails doing their, mm -hmm. uh, what was it called? Zero, Year Zero, where yes. he tried to do a lot of weird marketing with that as well, where you had to go to like different websites. Yeah. Well, and they did one of the biggest things for this movie was they played parts of the tape yeah with nothing cool. else like on tv and shit like they just played like little snippets of the tape with nothing huh. no explanation nothing it was just on tv just a fingernail like popping. commercials yeah. you know, like weird sh not shit like that no yeah, but like not. stuff you know like little there's been some other shows that have done that too american horror story i think was one of the most recent ones that that did that Right. They had that whole crazy marketing campaign with the first season. Interesting. And where they just had these weird fucking promo with no explanation as to what it was until hmm. right about 15 days, 30 days or so before it actually aired. Koji Suzuki, the author of the novel upon which the movies are based, says that the title actually refers to the cynical nature of the curse. Since for the viewer to survive after watching it, the videotape must be copied and passed around over and over, hence the ring. Right. Which... I found incredibly interesting. A couple of the scenes that I was discussing earlier that were completely taken out of the movie that I feel like would have made this so much cooler. Obviously would have pushed it into a rated R instead of a PG-13, but I would have been really excited to see it. The bathtub suicide scene was far more graphic in the original cut of this film, which obviously you can see little bits where they wanted to make it more graphic because they show quite a bit of blood just right. in very quick spurts. And so you know his head maybe exploded or his eyes popped, popped out or out, some yeah. type of fucking shit, right? And Samara's murder lasted longer in the original cut and was much more brutal than what audiences saw in theaters. Originally, the plastic bag over her head fails to subdue her, which is leading her mom to repeatedly strike her in the head with a large rock, which you see lying on the ground in some of the shots of the well. Huh, nice. And the rock only weakens her, and finally her killer resorts to slamming her head against the side of the well before dumping her in. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, why? Just do that part. <laughs> like she, Her head's in a bag. Like You're not going to see it. <laughs> But I mean, it's a child. Well, yeah, it's probably There's a little. There's no way in hell they'd be able. They, I'm sure it was hard enough for them to pass it as a PG-13 with right. with her, you know, suffocating her with a bag. It's a kid. Uh, standout scenes. Sorry. Standout scenes. Yeah, we're calling them standout, standout scenes, scenes now. <laughs> uh, or stand in the water and get electrocuted scenes. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's like a running theme in these movies for some reason. There's a lot of really, really little things, but the the big one is obviously the horse thing. 
Um, to give you guys kind of an idea, if you've never seen the scene. ring or know what any of the story is, though, let's break it down brief, like quick, um, poignant way as best we can. Essentially, what happens is, is there's a mother who has a daughter or a son and she finds out that her sister's daughter, her niece, her niece basically dies in some weird pre- weird way and she goes to the funeral her sister asks her to go report on this to figure it out because that's what she does for a living is she's a reporter so she goes and does some digging around she finds out that this tape she watches it the tape basically makes her shows her all these like weird kind of like disturbing images on the screen and then a phone rings and it says you have seven days to live basically and she'd heard the story sort of about it a little bit beforehand so it kind of freaks her out a little bit and she's not easily shaken she She's a real strong, independent woman and life starts going out of the spiraling out of control. You find out essentially, and this is spoiler alert territory, that Samara is Samara is actually some sort of psychic like beast. She's like a demon. She's basically. like, yeah, she has like some powers. She doesn't sleep. She's able to materialize things into reality. Uh, they, they briefly talk about it during that whole doctor scene. Very briefly. Yeah, and it doesn't really explain it real well, and I can't remember if they even talk about that in the movie, but the mother ends up killing her because they don't know what to do with her because she's there's something wrong with her. Right. Everything becomes worse when they bring her around. So in the chick, Naomi Watts' character, Rachel, right. how she ends up coming across this whole thing with about the, the tape and everything is her son pulls this whole like Sixth Sense bullshit where he's like somehow linked to Samara, yeah, which is they totally never really explain, but it's very yeah. Sixth Sense-esque. And I'm like, nobody's got shit on that movie. Don't fuck with that movie. Right, yeah. (laughs) I mean, the kid's creepier than the other kid. That kid is terrifying. Yeah, Yeah. he's way scarier. That kid's cute as fuck. This kid is frightening. (laughs) Not anymore. He's Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, he stayed like the same, but got older. It's weird. He's cool, though. I like him. He is cool. But yeah, he's not he's not cute anymore. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what leads her into diving into this. Yeah, story, we don't need to spoil too much more than that. But um, I think it makes a premise for some of the th- weird shit. Yeah, like the video's really cool. They show a lot of like really random weird scenes. Like I I believe the original movie Ringu was just a door. And it wasn't even a well. It was just a door. And then some girl comes out and comes towards the TV and cuts off. And that, and then you get the phone call. I believe that's what Ringu was like. Uh, so they kind of up, up, up the ante a little bit with the fucking video. As I recall, I can't, I think there was other stuff in the video. I just, it's been so long. I can't remember, but I believe that they did some pretty cool things with that. There was like, she watches the video and she's like analyzing the video, infecting everybody pretty much, but she tries not to. So she, there's one part where she pulls a fly off the screen of the television. She sees it, its wing like twitching when she paused the video mm-hmm. and pulls it off. And I thought that was really cool. I love that scene. It's like that whole that that adds to the movie in a way that I think was, you know, it's really unique. Mm-hmm. You know, and I like that where it kind of breaks through the border a little bit. So I thought that was cool. That yeah, was a, that was the scene I liked. I did really like that part, too. She had the That's something that always stands out to me. She had the diode where she pulls the diode out of her throat. I thought it was hair at first and she starts pulling on it and it's like the diode that you would stick on from, your chest. Yeah, from when she was being examined by the doctor. Right. Which I thought was like it at first cuz I thought it was hair too and I'm like, oh. But I don't want to I didn't want to take your horse thing, so No, I hate that scene. Well, let's yeah, talk about it you though. You can take it. I hate it's that. It's still a standout scene. scene. Pisses me the fuck off. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the big scenes in the movie, to right. be honest. Like But she's on this ferry. Somehow she decides that she's gonna go up to this fucking horse trailer that's on this ferry when she's going back to the island. And she comes up to this horse trailer. Why the fuck anybody in their right mind would come up to the side of a horse trailer and stick their hands in there to try and touch a fucking horse is beyond me. Well, I mean, I understand maybe trying it one time, but, but when the horse back, backed away, then you realize, hey, this might frighten the horse and I don't want to cause any problems, so I'm just going to walk away. No, yeah. she tries three or four fucking times yeah. and then is like, please calm down. I wasn't even angry. Why are you getting freaked out? Yeah. Like, Shut the fuck up. It's a horse. Like, first of all, this horse is, doesn't know where the fuck it is. It's still, it's <laughs> pent up in this fucking container who knows how long it's been in this container well she obviously knows that she's like cursed 
Right. And like, you're going to die, you fucking asshole. Like, why are you fucking with this horse? Like, there's obviously, you know, what's going on at this point with the story. Like, leave it the fuck alone. But anyway, she keeps fucking with this horse. The horse gets pissed off. And then eventually, like, which the whole scene leading up to this is fucking cool. But the horse ends up busting out of its carrier, right? And starts running around the fucking ferry. Right. Trying to kill her ass. Well, it's just freaked out. coming after her. I don't think it was actually trying to hurt her. I think it was just went crazy and jumped off. Yeah. But they make it look like it's trying to fucking kill her or whatever. Like, that's the feel they're going for at the end. But it's running directly towards her, and she just kind of ducks down, and it jumps over the side (laughs) of the fucking ferry. And it's... (laughs) Of I'm course, sorry. I think it's funny. Of course, hits its back fucking legs <laughs> it, on the fucking railing, and they like break, and it makes me really sad. And then it bangs its head against and the side of the boat. And then it bangs its head on the boat, and then it's all CGI and terrible, but still. And then the it horse looks is like, good. no, it does, it does, it does actually look good. But it was still like, it bums me out every time I watch it. <laughs> and then this poor horse is like crying and drowning in the water and it makes me really sad and, and then, then it, the, bl- the re- propeller kills and then it. it gets underneath the boat and of course you know everybody rushes to the other side and you know the horse because there's a scene in the fucking videotape where it's just like obviously blood in the water bubbling around right which i noticed anyway right and, and the little girl screams that's the scene and then you see the blood come out from underneath the boat and then the girl <laughs> the little girl that owns the horse is screaming and if i was that little girl i would have punch that bitch in the fucking face well yeah i was thinking the same thing i'm like if you would have just left the fucking horse alone it yes. would be alive right now you like, dumb instantly fucker would just like boom fuck you you owe me like eight grand eight million fucking dollars or however much horses are i don't know <laughs> you owe me all this money like i would have sent her as a bill like i would have thrown her over the fucking side of the boat like some yeah. shit like if that was my animal like i would have fucking kicked her ass well i don't think they really knew that she did it but even still she killed that horse basically she made it pretty obvious i yeah. thought but I don't know. The next part, the next scene oh, that I liked was I the one scene. where Brian Cox's character, he plays Mr. Morgan, who is Samara's dad. You find out that he was a basically, you think he he's the reason that she died, but really it's... Yeah, and they make you think he killed her. Yeah, but he really, he's just covering his wife's tracks. Right. Because his wife killed her. Right. Um, but... He didn't want her. But, but... He, he can't live with it anymore because she comes trudging it up and he's like, I realize now that she's never going to stop. And uh, he's like, so I'm just going to end it. And he's like got all this electronic gear, so cool, like in the bathroom, and it's like really overdoing it. Like, electronics. oh, it's a lot. He would have exploded, right? And then he just <laughs> puts on this fucking horse, uh, the bit, the mouth piece yeah. and then like clicks the switch on his chest and and stands in a fucking bathtub full of water and i really would have loved to seen the extra scene that you were talking about the extra pieces because that was a really like he just does a really good job of being in that moment it's so good i thought it was really cool so it's so good and you know what he it takes 40 fucking minutes to get to brian cox in the entire movie right right and when you finally get to him he has all about maybe four minutes of screen time right yeah which is so disappointing because you said it earlier like he is one of those actors that's completely underutilized and he yeah. is fucking phenomenal in anything he does whether it's comedy like super troopers to right horror. and yeah. he's so good in super Tr- troopers treat trick or treat it was trick pretty funny treat. too oh he's so i love I where he love, shoots the pumpkin head kid that, that was I so funny love trick or treat like yeah. you should do that honestly I, yeah i would be well we already have actually oh yeah you guys did huh yeah. If you want to see more Brian Cox, watch Autopsy Jane Doe. Yeah, no, I've, you'll enjoy it. I've been meaning to watch that movie for a long time. You so really I'm, need to I'm see it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to watch it. But yeah, I like the movie. It's just, I don't know, it just didn't age well for me, but you like it still. So yeah, I still, to me, it still holds true to the test of time for me. I don't, I don't know. It didn't really scare me when I first saw it in 2003, but. You know, so it obviously doesn't scare me now, but still like the imagery and everything to take away from it is still cool. It's a great story. You know? I mean, there are a lot of other scenes, guys. I just I mean, if you've already seen it, you kind of know. But uh, to be honest, like those are the big ones to me. Like the end honestly, scene is like, her coming out of the TV, obviously, which is like iconic. One. Yeah. It's a big um, one. But I mean, that is like the <laughs> end so of the movie, essentially. And it's like I hate that scene. I'm like, just run out. Like, why are you still in your apartment? Yeah, like, he just falls on the ground, like, what do I do? I don't know, grab a gun, (laughs) shoot it in the face? Or leave? I mean, fuck. (laughs) Kick it in the head? (laughs) When she comes in and discovers him, too, is hilarious to me. Uh, Oh, with his little O face? What about this says, continue walking towards him? Everything in that scene is saying, turn the fuck around, you stupid bitch. 
I don't know. What do you guys think of this movie? Like, do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you okay with it? Or is it too old that you don't remember what you think of it? I'm interested to see everybody, what they say. Yeah. We did watch another movie, though, The Unborn from 2009. Uh, The story is a young woman fights the spirit that is slowly taking possession of her, Uh, which is very vague. Oh, yeah. Um, It was written and directed by David S. Goyer, who is the writer of Batman Begins, Dark City, The Dark Knight, Batman v Superman, Blade 1, 2, and 3, Demonic Toys, Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, Arcade, The Puppet Masters, which is the Body Snatchers remake sort of thing. Uh, He did Crow, City of Angels, and he's also directed Blade Trinity and The Invisible. He did so much amazing shit prior to this movie. And right. Then he went on to do so much more amazing shit. Well, I don't know. Batman versus Superman was not. No, not that. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, yeah, because Dark Knight was prior to. And Blade 3 is really bad. I don't care. <laughs> I love all the Blade movies. <laughs> uh, some of the cast in this movie, uh, as I mentioned, he was the writer and director of this movie, by the way. So. Uh, some of the cast was Odette Annabelle or Annabelle. I don't know how to say her name. It's A N N A B L E. It's not Annabelle. B E L. Annabel. Annabel. Yeah, I guess like Hannibal. I don't know. I think it's Annabel. She's uh named Casey in the movie. She's the main actress. She was in Cloverfield, which is where I recognized her Same. from. She was also in Walk Hard, Kindergarten Cop as a kid. She was also in a corporate chaos movie called Operation Endgame and a comedy called Group Sex, <laughs> which is not a porno. I actually yeah. <laughs> I actually watched that on tour when I was like with the st- oh, really? aesthetic perfection. Yeah. yeah funny. And we were laughing about it because it is kind of weird. I was like, I mean, what the fuck are we watching? I'm more guys? happy about the fact that it wasn't because if you guys watched a fucking porno all together, that's weird. <laughs> Yeah. That's hey weird. guys, you, what is it weird if I'm jerking off? No, dude, just don't look at me in the eyes. I just don't give me eye contact. <laughs> and don't jizz in my hair. Uh, it also stars, and this is a great preface for this character and actor, <laughs> the the all time great Gary Oldman, mm-hmm. who plays. And this makes it even better. Rabbi Shen- Sendek. Yeah. Uh, he obviously is known for many films like Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Dark Knight. He played Sid in Sid and Nancy. He was in The Fifth Element, Leon, The Professional. Everybody! Harry Potter! Uh, he was also in a, in a fantastic that. movie that I can't wait to make fun of one day called Tiptoes. And uh, I'd also like to watch, uh, well, he was in Darkest Hour recently and many more. He's, in, he's serious black in the Harry Potter series, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I do remember that. He was he's the werewolf nice. guy or whatever. No. I can't remember. He's not a werewolf. Anyway, we're not talking about Harry Potter again. (laughs) Don't get me going. Yeah, I can't. I I love Gary Oldman, so. Uh, It also stars Cam Giganet, who plays Mark. He was in the Twilight series as James. He was in the Magnificent Seven, the movie Pandorum, which he's really weird in that role, by the way. He is. I I didn't like him in Pandorum. I I didn't like his character. I didn't like how he acted. He's fucking weird. It was weird. I like him. He's supposed to be unsettled. Settling, but it was it was something else. It was uncomfortable, but not in like an interesting way. Right. He was also in a movie called The Roommate. Uh, this one also stars Megan Good, who plays Romy. She was in Brick, uh, House Party 4, You Got Served, One Miss Call, and Anchorman 2. Mm-hmm. Also stars Idris Elba. Idris who, Elba. Idris Elba, sorry. Sorry, it's fine. I like him. So. Uh, he was uh, <laughs> Father Wyndham in this movie. He was in the movies Pacific Rim. Thor, all the Thor movies, and some of the Avengers movies. He was in Star Trek Beyond, The Dark Tower, Disappointment Film. I know. Prometheus, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, Losers, Prom Night, Remake, and 28 Weeks Later, to name a few. Yep. Also, I mentioned Jane Alexander, who was uh, the grandma Sophie. She was in, like I said, uh, Glory, Terminator Salvation, The Unborn, and Dreamhouse. And the child, creepy fucker, uh, Atticus Schaefer or Schaffer, uh, plays Maddie the creepy fucking boy. He was in the movies Hancock with Will Smith and Frank and Weenie, the animated movie. He's so. also in the TV show called The Middle, which is where I know him from. Oh, I don't even know that And show. the kid that plays the super creepy kid, Bartow, the demon. Yeah, I don't know who the demon kid that was. That is... Car- the actor that plays Carl in Shameless, the American oh, version of Shameless. I, see, I didn't even see that show. The budget for this movie was 16 million and it made about 20 million in the US and about 76.5 million worldwide which wasn't a box office smash or anything it could have seen like 
What was the budget overall? It was uh, sixteen million, and they made about twenty million in the U.S. and seventy six point five million worldwide. So, Whew. well, what are your thoughts on this movie? I remembered seeing this movie. Like we, I discussed with you a little bit prior to this. Mm-hmm. There was a time where my best friend used to fucking drag me to horror movies in the theaters all the time. Yeah, which I have never been much for watching horror movies in the theater. It just it's not something that I like, mainly because I hate other humans. Most of the time and how they react in horror movies, it ruins it for me and it takes me out of the entire experience. She took me to see this movie. She wanted to see it really bad, right? So we we go and see it. And I remember being like one part in this movie that was great and the rest of it was incredibly disappointing to me. Mm -hmm. And I forgot about it. And when you mentioned that you wanted to watch it, when I looked it up, I kind of remember like because the main um, poster is of Odette whatever's looking at herself in the mirror with her butt right yeah that ass the white tank the white wife beater <laughs> and the white underwear and i'm just like this looks kind of familiar but at the same time like i still don't really remember it right and i could be confusing it with like seven other movies that are pretty similar to this they really wanted to sell that movie is that with her ass <laughs> that's yeah. the only way that they could sell this fucking movie to be honest <laughs> it really is and, and that's sad because her ass isn't that great. And what took me, what brought me back in, okay. right? Because I, I was watching it the, the entire time going, I feel like I've seen this movie before. Why do I feel like I've seen this? It's all very kind of familiar to me. And, but I don't think I've seen it. And then all of a sudden, when that stupid fucking kid, after she, he's, she comes in and he's showing the reflection of the baby or whatever, you know? And that fucking kid says, Jumby wants to be born now. I was like, I've seen this fucking movie. And I hate this fucking movie <laughs> instantly. But then I remember the one scene that's redeeming as fuck to me. And we'll talk about that later. However, this is not one of my favorite movies anywhere near it. I I don't really have a positive takeaway from this. I didn't when I saw it. I still don't. Um, the story is kind of interesting. Sure. Um, and now, especially with being more well submersed in the whole concept of a Dybbuk. Yeah. And the stories behind is, the Dybbuk. And sure. especially because we got to be around a famous one when we went to oh yeah Zach I know. museum and i told mouse all about it and he got really extra jealous he was already jealous and now he's very jealous i appreciate it a little bit more especially because it goes kind of true to the whole story behind that idea i guess it's, you know as far as i'm familiar with so it's interesting but it's still a convoluted story it goes too many different places and it doesn't all tie together very well in the end and they try and do too many things with a weird plot and it doesn't pay off and they have so many amazing actors that i'm so confused on how they convince i want to know how they fucking convinced gary oldman and idris elba to be a part of this movie well and i think the reason why is because he respected the writer probably and the director because of all the movies that he had written i mean we're talking about the dark knight uh or was it was it the Dark Knight? He did the Dark Knight. He helped write the Dark Knight screenplay. Right. Uh, so I'm sure that they had a working relationship uh, for this film. And they were like, he was like, yeah, like, I'll do it because uh, Goyer's on there. I'm good with him. I'm sure. Like, I'm sure that's a big part of it. Obviously, if it was a $15 million budget or $16 million budget, they didn't pay them enough. Right. So and especially like even though it was kind of early in Idris Elba's career, it wasn't that early. And, and he's a British actor. What so I love like... so much, too, is that they're trying to get him to be the first black James Bond. There's been this whole thing. That really? They want him to be the black James Bond or whatever. And and I would love that. I like him. I don't know. He's a great actor and he is fucking fine. I don't know if he's that charismatic. He's that charismatic. To me, he is. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah. Not at all anywhere in my range of. Well, what what did you like about it? Did you like at anything all. at all, or yeah? There, there's one scene in particular that I actually really enjoyed from this movie. That was something that still like it's not as scary now as it was to me when I first saw it, obviously, but it's still creepy and it's so good. But we'll get to that when we talk about scenes. Okay, we're not there yet. It's not a fucking horrible movie. I've seen way worse fucking horror movies, especially in theater, because Jenny dragged me to some terrible fucking movies. Yeah, and that's why I banned her from taking me to horror movies for a very <laughs> long time. Um, but the ha- the haunting of Molly Hartley was a million times worse than this. Do not ever fucking make me watch that movie and talk about it because I will not be serious at all at any point. We'll be talking about that next week. Oh, fuck you. No, we're not. We already know what we're talking about next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It's I feel like if the story would have just not tried to like would have stuck with one premise instead of trying to go this other you know German Nazi esque story. It didn't jive as well as I wanted it to. Like, I feel like it was just too choppy of a 
like put together. Okay. I don't know. It didn't work the way that I hoped it was going to work. And it felt very like, it felt very much like a stretch and like they were reaching for something to try and make it make more sense and to make the whole concept of the Dybbuk be like to tie it back further. Okay. If that makes any sense of what I'm saying. Sure. To try and make it sound like it's this like long lasting fucking demon that's been around for centuries or whatever. Right. Like that's why I felt like it was a reach. I didn't feel like it was necessary. So it kind of bummed me out. I'm like, stick with one or the other, tie it in better. It just, it was very just sloppy. Okay. I think I liked it a little bit more than you. I think this is the first big movie that I saw even mentioning a Dybbuk. Oh, for sure. I think it is the first big, I mean, there is, I'm looking at it right now and I, there's a movie from 1937 called the Dybbuk. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure most people don't know what the fuck that is. Right. I think the two movies that everybody always remembers is this one, The Unborn from 2009 and The Possession from 2012. Yeah. Which has that guy from The Watchmen. I can't think of his name, the, the laugher or whatever. Oh my god, the hot one. Uh, yeah, that the guy. Comedian? Yeah, the comedian. God damn Thank it! You. I fucking Sorry. love him. I always forget his actual name too. But I love he him. he did a movie about the Dybbuk box where his daughter gets he gives he goes to this auction and she picks it up or whatever. Yeah, that's the one that it's tied to at Zach Baggins's. Is... It seems it's weird though. Museum. Like when I watched this movie, it seemed to kind of embrace not only one of the movies that we talked about from the last episode with the whole mirror thing, uh, the boogeyman, mm-hmm. uh, but it also kind of dips into the black. Blackwater Cove part two in a weird weird? way. Yeah, it's funny. Which is funny because (laughs) I literally made a trailer for the Blackwater Cove before I even watched this movie. It was part of the inspiration of why we watched The Unborn this week because some of the footage I used was random footage from movies that I was just looking on YouTube to use in the video that I was making for the trailer to kind of get the idea of this witch, uh, this ancient goddess uh, across in the trailer and that footage happened to be from the unborn so the bathroom freakout scene in particular in this movie which i didn't even use in the footage for the trailer would have been so perfect. was is it was very similar and i was like holy shit i was like that's so weird like how this all like wraps around each other but anyway but that's that's what i thought that's initially what i thought but of course it it kind of goes its own direction yeah. so now to give you a little bit more of a opinion like a before i jump jump into it but i saw this movie a long while ago when it first came out and i was a little turned off by it i don't remember exactly why but i just wasn't blown away so i sort of quickly wrote it off uh especially that it was around the time that you could barely get a new horror movie in the theater that was rated r right and this was one of the many pg-13 flicks that came out in the 2000s now the second watch that i had which is just recently i was surprised to see that there was a strong Stronger cast than I had remembered. Yeah, same. I was like, oh shit, like Gary Oldman's in this fucking movie? Idris Elba's in this movie? Like, what the fuck? So I guess that made a little bit better. Although both have had their fair share of bad movies, by the way. <laughs> yeah. They're not perfect in everything they Talk do. <laughs> Tiptoes? I haven't seen that. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I've heard nothing but crazy shit. Uh, what's the what's the guy who did the memes, the video viral memes on TV uh, on Comedy Central? Josh Tosh Point Oh. Tosh Point Oh, yeah, yeah. He did a, a review of that. It's one <laughs> of the. Shit, really? It's seriously one of the funniest things I've ever fucking seen, and I've never even seen asshole. the movie. That's funny. So okay. if you can watch the completely fully unedited Tosh Point Oh of t- Tiptoes, you should watch it, guys. Anyway, back on track. So I th- I think it's kind of an average film with a budget, but the story is a bit different to me than most because of the Dybbuk thing, because I don't think I've seen anything with the Dybbuk ever being mentioned uh, before it. Right. So it, it feels may feel a little bit familiar to some people who watch it and you won't exactly be able to say why. The effects were kind of cool. They actually did choose to do a lot of practical effects in this movie, uh, mixed with a lot of visual effects, which I really didn't like. Uh, The visual effects, I think, fucking ruined this movie. Um, It felt kind of like more of an afterthought, more than an initial need. Like, they needed to fulfill this need to make this movie be what it was. So they, like, changed people's faces and, like, I don't know, it, it really looked garbage. Like, it really made the movie look shitty. It yeah. was like shitty rush job is what it felt like. But the practical effects that were in this movie were fucking on point. 
like there's a couple of scenes where they show like these creaturey looking things and i was like fuck yeah dude like i got like at times i've got feeling of jacob's ladder i also got a feeling of in the mouth of badness in parts of that um although neither of those movies this movie in particular is nowhere near a shadow of those movies yeah. by the way but it still gave me that element of something like that so i kind of liked it for that reason now even this even though i don't think this movie like really kind of landed real well from its dismount it still lands kind of shaky but it's a slightly above average film that's pretty easy to pop on for like just a quick like hey i just want to watch something you know it's got it makes an attempt to make its own lore yeah it's a good background movie right for sure and they actually did do some like real background studies on it and i'll tell you guys about that in the trivia but you know, it is a Michael Bay film, so... Right. I was so surprised by that. Right. Honestly, I was like, what? Are you fucking kidding me? Like... I, I saw, I mean, it was the first... no explosions. And not only that, it was the first Michael Bay film, horror film, that was ever PG-13. So, say what you will about the guy, but I guess he really doesn't like PG-13 films, so I don't know. But I'd say I'd give this one probably like a six, maybe a little higher with like a 6.5, especially for a PG-13 flick. I didn't think it was that bad. I didn't feel like I got ripped off. And it showed me a lot more than most PG-13 flicks without gore and shit that much, really. So I don't know. I kind of liked it, but I was surprised by it. I thought I was going to hate it. But after seeing that like creature thing that I had in the trailer, I was just like, I got to watch this. (laughs) So what would you give it a score of? Five. <clears throat> so right on the nose average. Yeah. Okay. To me, and that's big. Like, it, there's two scenes actually in particular that make me like it a lot more than anything else. Okay. Well, there is a fair bit of trivia on this. There is a scene in the movie, and this is going to be kind of spoilery, but I'll let's give you a breakdown of what the movie's sort of about. There's a girl who grows up. She's friends with this girl, Romy, and all of a sudden she starts having these dreams about. I don't know, some child or Or something. Visions in general, yeah. Yeah, visions. Like, doesn't. Oh, she's a babysitter at this one place. Uh, and some weird shit happens at the babysitter's place that the kid is like acting really strange and shit. Yeah, he's uh, the kid. There's an older kid who's probably like six or seven ish, maybe eight. Maybe. Um, and then an infant. I think he's like six. Yeah, he's supposed to be. Probably. He's one of those like too old to be in the kid's body. Yeah, he's weird. He's yeah. always been one of those kids that looks older than he is. Too. Right. Um, and then there's an infant. And she hears, she's on the phone with her friend. And she hears, you know, him talking over the baby monitor. She goes up right. and the kid is showing the baby its reflection in a hand mirror. Look at it. Look at it. It says yeah, over and looking, over. You know, keep watching. He's like, or look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. It's super weird. And then she's like, what are you doing? And he smashes the mirror over her face. That and I was, was like, good, that part was sick, though. Dude. And the funny <laughs> thing is, is she's a pretty girl, right? But she's yeah. got this tiny little cut baby on her little baby scar cut. That yeah. It's disappears like, very quick yeah <laughs> I thought very that, quick yeah it does really it's only in there for the it's only there for the next maybe like five minutes like the next scene shortly after that and it's gone right and then she's like having these visions about this kid or whatever these nightmares or whatever the fuck it is and that next day she's running down the street jogging down the same place she keeps having these visions which christina was like why do you keep going to the place that you have these bad visions about Fucking right <laughs> I would avoid it like the fucking plague. So she's jogging past the house that she babysits at and she sees all these like ambulances and police and shit and they pull out a, the dead baby like the infant because apparently it died and the mom comes out screaming and and there's the little evil kid up in the window like you know like yeah w- yeah exactly kick Which, it kick it in the head kick it in the head <laughs> Which, shortly before that Romy explains like the whole story behind that of, as to why it's like a um it's bad oh juju, bad luck yeah or whatever essentially to do that it's apparently an infant you can steal to... a child's soul <laughs> or some dumb yeah. shit with the mirror apparently a baby's not supposed to look at its own reflection in a mirror until it's at least a year old three years old i think uh, it was one year is at it one year it's okay. one year old otherwise if it does it means it's going to die soon Okay. For whatever fucking reason. Nobody so, fucking yeah. knows why that ties into the story. I have no fucking idea. Well, the little, the six-year-old probably choked it out. The six-year-old's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's obviously a fucking murderer. So, so fast forward, start things start to unfold. She goes to the club, like, in our story, like, in the Blackwater Cove, they go to the club, and she goes in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, all the toilets are overflowing with these crickets, and they're called Jerusalem crickets. Is that what they are? Yeah. They're like weird ant 
cricket. They're like, crickets. Hybrids. They're so fucking. They're terrifying. called Jerusalem crickets, potato bugs, or Jerusalem crickets. In Mexico, the bugs are in the movie are called Cara de Nino. I hate them so much. So They're gross. Yeah, fuck those things. Like I'm I was like, there's like, too much crickets in this too movie. Too many. I'm like, I hate crickets anyway, but I'm usually not a big fucking like get creeped out by bug person but those things like what yeah i didn't like him either she like, like one scene in the movie there is like where she's like cooking eggs and it comes out of the egg Mouth i was kind of so i was like oh god dude he was like oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i was like really like that's okay but <laughs> but anyway <laughs> to make a long story short she has a freak out moment in the bathroom she sees all this crazy shit on the walls uh and then fast forward she goes to she does some you know investigation and she finds out that there's this woman that her mom didn't talk about and that her mom because her mom was like crazy and was in a mental mental institution and killed herself i guess yeah it, she hung herself she hung herself in the institution and she couldn't figure out why and it was this big mystery and she goes to this place this old person's home where she finds this, this old woman who she turns out to be her grandmother uh and they tell she tells her about the dibic and all this other stuff and how the the child was born uh the child was never born in her mother's uh womb because it died in childbirth mm-hmm. and uh, sorry it her umbilical cord wrapped around its neck right in, in childbirth no it was before it, they died in utero before they were even born. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like she was born, but her. Oh, OK, well, whatever. Yeah, he was already dead. She choked her own brother. Yeah, yeah. Her, <laughs> she choked her own brother out. But it goes further <laughs> back um, before that. But some of the, and the reason I'm telling you this is so that you can kind of understand what this is about. If you haven't seen this movie and you're brave enough to listen to this, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> because obviously we're going to spoil the shit out of it yeah. right now. So. In the in the movie, when she's in the bathroom and there's that freak out scene, there's a hole in the the glory hole in the fucking yeah. stall, <laughs> by the way. Uh, and it, and and in this hole, there's an eye. They use the, the the iris of the eye as like, and then it says, "In the kingdom of the blind, over top and underneath it, it says the one eyed man is king." Now, I looked this up because I was like, I'm curious. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know. So this is actually a quote from a Dutch philosopher from the 1400s. He was named Desiderius, Desiderius Aramis, and he wrote a book that had changed its name a couple of times, but it ended up being Adigorium Chiliades when it was republished in 1509 with uh, about 3,000 proverbs and adages this time many with a, a lot of notes about why these were proverbs and such he basically most of the proverbs in in this book were accepted by society at the time as a as a common wisdom of the day so his reason for amassing so many of these proverbs and adages in one book had a great deal to do with the fact that aramis focused primarily on providing a latin translation of the new testament which apparently it's also found in luke 6 chapter 6 39 as can a blind man lead a blind man will they not both fall into a pit so i don't know what that means but i thought it was kind of interesting because they try to grab onto some actual old school shit yeah um they talk about the hand of miriam which i looked up too it's oh yeah the pendant the amulet pendant thing that the grandmother gives to her to sort of like protect her and clearly doesn't work <laughs> um <laughs> it does later yeah it, it kind of does huh yeah, yeah that's does. right not in the way it's intended. No, not at first, <laughs> anyway, at least. But it's actually called a ham- hamsa, which is an Arabic word for the number five, because there's five fingers. But it's mostly associated with uh, Sephardic Jews to ward off the evil eye, which the hamsa is also variously known as the hand of Fatima, after the daughter of the prophet Muhammad, the hand of Mary, the hand of Miriam, like I said, and the hand of the goddess. But the evil eye is actually a reference that is talked in like many different cultures, like to name a few, Brazil, Turkey, Islam, Mexico, India, Greece, Pakistan. They all talk about the evil eye and try to prevent the evil eye from changing you. Mm -hmm. So uh, another thing that I thought was kind of interesting, doctor that Sophie is talking about, that she recounts in her time in Auschwitz because she's a Holocaust survivor. And they, she was also a twin 
which you find out in the story is like this big reveal because there was Dr. Joseph Mengele, who was a notorious fucking scientist that worked for Hitler Mm -hmm. and basically did a lot of like fucked up experiments. One of his premier things that he liked to study is twins. Twins. And this is like legit shit. Yeah, that was actually something I was interested in because it was I looked at actual I've seen and I've actually seen some documentaries on him on on Mengele. Mm -hmm. He actually did inject twins in their eyes. He changed out their organs. Yeah. He all uh, kinds of shit. He like some of these a lot of these kids like actually survive too, which is crazy. Some of them died because I mean obviously yeah Yeah. some of them are pretty fucked up um i took a class like quickly to talk about it i took a class in high school that was like a one trial period semester uh which was my favorite history teacher ever who did a holocaust course right where he did nothing but talk about the holocaust and unknown things about it and he was one of the people that he discussed Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's and the experiments that he did on people and children and uh, he was crazy. Well, and, you know, I'm not trying to say that this is where the idea of reanimator came from. But in a way, I kind of feel like in a way it kind of is because in in Bride of the Reanimator, like they sew people together and parts together and shit like that. And Mengele actually did do that. Not that. You know, clearly not that it wasn't the character is not a fucking but he was he was more of a scientist trying to figure out shit. Yeah. And I think, you know, just, you know, worked for a really horrible human. (laughs) uh, Well, I don't think he was a good guy. Yeah. No, he was definitely not defending him by any means. He was not at all. But I just thought it was kind of interesting because like they base it off of some of that. Plus, they talk about the Dybbuk. You know, they talk about like how they, they explain the Dybbuk a little differently than what I've heard. Right. Which was they say it was a spirit that was locked out of heaven right and is looking for a way back into some reality somehow they never they kind of talk about it as a demon but they don't really say it like that yeah so it's weird that was i feel like my biggest issue maybe yeah story is because they go to this plate and i feel like the idea with the whole nazi holocaust survivor you know doctor experimentation on twin story would have worked a little bit better had they explained the concept of the Dybbuk better. Well, I mean, again, like I said, this is the first movie that actually even attempted to do it. Right. So I got to give it some credit for originality, even if it did botch it up a little bit. At least they tried a little. They absolutely did. So I I can't hate them for that. Right. Do you have any standout scenes that you want to talk about real quick? Uh, I love the opening. Of the movie. Oh, okay. I actually really like it. Nothing to do with the kid, honestly. Like, I don't give a flying fuck about the kid. He's not creepy to me. He just looks stupid. (laughs) Um, But also, I know him from Carl from Shameless, so he's adorable and, like, silly and not scary. Um, But the dog. Like, when she sees the dog wearing that paper mache Oh, when it's upside down, yeah. Like, no, before it's upside down, it's just the mask that the dog's wearing. It's so fucking weird and unnerving. Yeah, it is weird. And in that setting is so beautiful. And just that picture that's painted in your head is so cool. But I'm just like, Bleh. you know, but I love it so much. Okay. That was one of the, like, the opening. I was like, I had so much fucking hope for this movie. I was like, fuck yeah. And then it kept going and I got sad. Well, the, the, <laughs> the other one I was going to mention, which I already talked about, was the club bathroom scene. I like that scene but, too. Yeah, because it kind of has like, they have these weird tentacly creatures Gross. that are flapping their things while the crickets are pouring out of the toilet. <laughs> So I thought that was really cool. That's the one that reminded me of Jacob's Ladder a That's little a bit. That's a good scene. But the one that I that at first maybe kind of laugh a little bit is when Romy's driving down the street and she hits that oh, yeah. the babysitter kid like she... on the on the tricycle and then he flips over the car and she's like, "Oh my god!" Like <laughs> he does a cartwheel. He's like, "Whoop." I love it. And then that he breaks whole, the fucking the, the window, con- the dude. The conversation that they have after that cracks me the fuck up. Right, because like, he's like, he's just like, kids all like, she goes and runs behind the car and kids all like, just standing there smiling all fucking weird and shit. And he's like, he doesn't want you to help her. You're gonna die. She's like, what? He's like, if you do, he'll kill you. And she's like, I'm fucking out of here. Well, she's basically like, fuck off. Like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Like, I was like, whoa, kid. Like, she reacts how I expected her to. Right. Because that's how I would react. I would have kicked it in the face. I probably would have, too. <laughs> like, to be honest, I would have been a lot meaner about it. I would be like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, kicked him a little bit. Like, she was probably I, just happy she wasn't going to go to court and, and go to jail or something. I don't have kids because I 
would kick them. Well, first of all, if, me out. if you're if you're gonna hit a kid in a <laughs> tricycle, it's not gonna go flipping over the car. No, no, it's, it's gonna not. go underneath, underneath or something. It. Yeah, it's a plastic like, fucking tricycle. Like, you're gonna kick its head right off the bumper. <laughs> No, yeah, that whole shit. I was just like, "Come on!" That's I love fucked that. Up, man. I love when she goes to her front too. She's like, "I hit that kid down the street." <laughs> yeah. And then they move on real fast. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Real fast from that conversation, I'd be like, "You hit, you hit my fucking neighbor's child." Well, that fucker needed to get hit the anyway. Hell? He was creepy. He was creepy. He's good. He's good though. Right. What He's other good. scene did you did you remember? I love oh whoa 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 love. so you're saying love now for a love. movie that you no. called average no no no. i told you from the beginning i love this scene i've always loved this scene oh okay this go was ahead. a redeeming scene for me right entirely for this movie it's not as creepy and scary as it was when i first this saw is the it. one that reminds me in the mouth of madness a little bit yes yeah but this scene is so good and oh so she in the old folks home where she visits her grandma, right? right? There is one of the grandma's neighbors is this old man who had a stroke and he's paralyzed from the waist down. So he's in a wheelchair and he can't really. He's catatonic. He's catatonic. Yeah, he's catatonic and he's paralyzed from the waist down. He can't do anything on his own. Right. And so the grandmother is, this is now the vengeful ass Dybbuk is going after everybody that she loves and all of her friends and family or whatever to isolate her, right? That's the whole concept behind it. And so it goes after, and this is Barto. This is basically the her twin's spirit, essentially. It's the Dybbuk that's embodied. Right. It was twin. her brother. Yeah, her brother, the old lady, right? He comes in into the old folks, old folks home. Obviously, the, all the this is the kid. demon kid, by yeah, the way, the guys. Kid. Because let me just preface this real quick. Yeah, you have. To, okay, you have so to. when she was in Auschwitz and she was getting experimented on as a twin with her brother, who Barto. was a he was a, a twin, and Barto died from some of the experiments, but he came back as a Dybbuk. Yes, and she knew it, and so she killed him. Right, because she knew that it wasn't him, which is some pretty heinous shit. First Absolutely. of all, but when she has. Okay, because like when she meets her granddaughter, because you find out that the main girl is the granddaughter and this is carried on, she tells the girl at first that she does know nothing about it other than she alludes that she's a twin. And then she realizes it's her daughter and then calls her to tell her all these like and has her come out and they talk about this shit uh, about what this demon is and what she needs to do. And as soon as she does, that's when Barto, the, a.k.a. the, the Dybbuk and her brother, Jambi, he Comes in, cuts all the lights in the old folks' home, right? And like a fucking idiot, she goes to investigate it. Because in any horror movie, that's what they do. Why? <laughs> I don't fucking understand. It's just scary. Because it's like when the lights go... When the lights go out, though, when the power goes out, it is a little trippy. Yeah, but I don't move. I'm staying there. I'm not going to go investigate what the oh, fuck I caused investigate. my... No. No, I have learned. I'm not investigating what turned <laughs> my fucking power off. If I hear a weird noise, I'm not going towards it. Like, hell fucking no. I'm getting a far as fuck away as possible i've seen enough horror movies i am not that fucking dumbass that's gonna go looking for the noise or looking for what to cut my power no <laughs> absolutely not i'm getting in the corner i'm getting some type of fucking weapon and i am holding my position <laughs> okay anyway um so she goes to investigate it and she ends up finding her neighbor or her like, her neighbor in the old folks home essentially yeah, the, right the catatonic. The, the catatonic paralyzed dude and she starts to go down the, to continue on with her journey and go down the stairs, right? And all of a sudden, she hears this loud noise or something falling over, which sounds exactly like his wheelchair falling over, right? And she looks up, back, kind of co goes back up, looks up the stairs, and she sees his wheelchair is tipped over, but he's not in it. So she does what I would do and continues going down the stairs. <laughs> like, fuck this. Like, yeah. this is weird. And she keeps going, right? And then she hears something and she turns back around and then... Um, she sees nothing, so then she goes to continue down the stairs, and that's when the fucking guy comes up into view at the stairs below her, right? So she's trying to go descend the stairs, and he's down in front of her now, somehow. On all fours. On all fucking fours, and kind of comes to the base of the staircase where she's standing, and his head starts to flip and invert upside down, right? 
Yeah. Which is like in the mouth of madness, by yes, the way. Absolutely. Because they and do I exact love same that thing. Scene yeah. in that movie so much in the car. They, with they the pretty chick. much like, oh, kind of took so it good. from it. To they be honest. I feel like they absolutely did. Yeah. And I love it in the in in the mouth of madness so much more. Yeah, oh yeah. So much more on so many levels, because that movie's amazing. But that scene in that movie is just holy balls. Anyway, so his head starts to turn. Right, so now his head is completely upside down to where his body is, and then he starts chasing her up the stairs, right, on all fours with his head fucking upside down. And it was way scarier to me when I saw it in 2009 than it is now, but it's still fucking creepy and uncomfortable. But it's not even the stairs part. It's later when she gets to the hallway. Oh, yeah, because you see it on all fours. Yeah, there's that shadowy <sighs> segment in that trailer I was talking about that that's I made where it creeps out. Like, yeah, that's, that's the, the one. Scene. Yeah, and that's pretty I fucking. I loved it. And then all of a sudden he starts booking it fucking towards her ass down this hallway and it's all shadowed and dark and uh, probably to help with the effects to not make it look as fake as it did. But and then also make it creepy. I don't know. But it was so fucking cool. Right. And right. Then she somehow disappears into this fucking closet and then they do this. And she whole, sees Jumbie's face. They do this shadow play thing, which I loved underneath the door. Yeah. which I thought was really cool. She's in this utility closet and they do the shadow play of the creature underneath the door and he's banging on the door and then he stops and it's silent. And you're like, obviously this bitch is going to die. <laughs> like, right, yeah. You think he's going to bust through the door or something's going to happen and all of a sudden Barto slash Jumby, what the fuck ever, stupid shitty ass CGI face <laughs> pops out right next to her and it's like, bleh, bleh, and it's stupid. See, there is a couple of parts. It ruined that scene to me. And that, it me that's so the sad. thing that really ruined it for me for this movie is that in the movie they show, they try to do the CGI on the oh. face and it's like, it's not even static to their movements. It's like all over the place and it kind of looks like, I don't know how to explain the, it. The club scene. Well, not even that. The 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 kid scene with the fucking sharp razor teeth when it kills her friend Romy. Hated that. So and they much. and then the guys like try to beat the shit out of the kid, and she's like, "Wait, wait, Stop. don't!" And then Maddie's like, "I'm sorry, what's happening?" <laughs> that transition was so stupid. I, at first, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, kill." <laughs> so was I. Because I was like that fucking evil little fucker. And then uh, and then when I was like Fuck crying, I felt child. really I felt really bad. I was like, "Okay, well, this is kind of because he obviously isn't possessed." Yeah, anymore. he was in the he heat of the. Know what's moment. going on the heat <laughs> yeah. of the moment <laughs> anyway yeah that those the faces that they did the cgi on really Ooh, fucked everything up for me that weird duck face thing they did especially to the kid. at the end too with her boyfriend mark or whatever yes he fucking like his face before he like launches off the second floor onto the ground is and should have been dead from that kind of height Instantly. it's literally like fucking 20 feet in the air like and thrown at like hard. I don't know ten miles an hour yeah, hard uh, like hard to hits stone. the ground and, that is pure fucking concrete. Well, he doesn't die right away. I get he does die. Yeah, but not instantaneously yeah. like he should have. And then she's like holding him. <laughs> I laughed too. It's fine. I did laugh. Yeah, it's uh, fine. Although yeah. I just just to kind of wrap this up, there was one scene that I did like where the mother, she has this vision of her mother in a chair where she was sitting by the window being crazy and her head was down and then she pulls her head up and it's this <gasps> yeah, weird, it's like, like a teeth monster thing. She's got like this really weird artistic like mouth uh, like and it's really cre. It's it, all it's oh. all practical effects too. By the way, guys, this was not done in CGI. Like no CGI could have done this justice. I always forget about that part. That until part I see it still. That's why I like this movie is because of those practical effects moments. That part is so dope. Yeah, like the creepy crawly guy. That part, like there is a couple of things, but the CGI that they did and it really just fucking. Ruins mouth it. fucks the whole fucking thing the whole experience is ruined by those those shitty points and gary oldman's performance was subpar it was fuck. it wasn't even his but fault that's how they write him yeah, yeah that's it wasn't even his him. fault it's just like they didn't give him any chops the same with idris elba they didn't give yeah same thing like those two characters are really interesting they're the the the, the good characters that you want to see and they're really in it for like I don't know, five minutes? If that. Five, 20, Gary 15 Oldman's, minutes total, all of them? Gary Oldman's maybe in it for a total of five minutes, and Idris Elba's like three. Right. Like the CGI when they did it on the catatonic guy and his head's turning wasn't, wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible, but everywhere else they use CGI, garbage. Yep. 
Like I hated it. It really, it really upset me. And I think I remember that being the reason now why I didn't like the movie before. Yeah, that was the big, the biggest thing that took it away from me. Right. Honestly, the effects it looks fucking stupid. It looks comical. It's not scary. It's just dumb. Stupid ass exorcism towards the end. I didn't mind the the story's fine. It's just those CGI for me. It just ruined it. Pretty fucking original, like the story. It's it it's cool. It's well, the stuff thing. they do in it, what the, they do in it, the right. show pieces that they have in it are actually not so bad. Right. If they would have had four of those really good show pieces in this movie, it would have brought that movie up to like an eight. Agreed. But the, all the CGI shit brings it down to like a six it's, for me. It's thrown together very fucking messily. Like it's just sloppy and. But I would watch this connect. again, though. I would watch it again later on. And, and I would be mad about the same shit and again. And like five years from now, I might watch right. it again. Right, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I watched it for the first time in 2009, and that was the last time I watched it. And now it's 2018, and I just watched it again. Well, it's pretty clear that you're going to pick the ring over this one. I yeah. mean, it's based on the yeah. score alone, so. Oh, I mean, for sure, for sure. But I, you are, too. I would, too. But I still think this is worth a watch. Like, no, it is. At least give it a watch and check out The Unborn from 2009, because I think it's at least worth revisiting yeah i don't disagree with you yeah there are good things about it even though as a whole it's not that great like it doesn't execute the whole thing well i completely agree with you on that it's worth watching i would literally go and buy this just for those two scenes alone i can just watch just well for specifically the catatonic scene alone is is worth me owning it just to visually see that every now and then so, guys, what do you think? Have you seen these two movies? You've obviously probably seen The Ring remake from 2002. I'd hope so. But have you seen The Unborn? Not. There's actually two other films, by the way, called The Unborn. One from the 90s. I think it was 1991. And then there was one from Japan that has the... It's like a remake of the 90s version in Japan from like 2000. Yeah. I, I looked that up just to see because I was actually debating of us watching those to compare them to the unborn but guys thank you guys so much for coming by this week let us know what you think of these movies um we're gonna start trying to let you guys know what we're watching at the end of the week of each episode uh for so like this next week we're gonna be watching howling three Three and and four four. so we're gonna continue on with that once a month you're welcome until they're gone yeah you're welcome (laughs) but i gotta see them now i gotta see them we we need to do franchises like these and just continue on so do without it but that's fine if you guys are looking to see what we're going to be talking about next week you're known now so check them out our so. fans are going to be like, never mind, I'll skip next week. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Except dude, Sarah. because we'll probably, <laughs> it'll be fun to make fun of or just like. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. We make fun of it. <laughs> we will be back on Monday next week, as always. Stay weird, monsters.